We claim it. It is our Independence Day. Tonight we have with us Queen Tendai. I'm sure she will give us words of wisdom throughout the program, but I'm also honored to have her with us in order to give libations to begin the program. You cannot begin a program of this nature rooted in not only the culture, but the politics of our people without bringing the ancestors to bear. Sister Tendai. I didn't know I was going to be called on, brother, and they say be ever ready. Just wait a minute. I got to go get my little stuff. So take, I it, take your time. Be okay. ever ready always. All right. But we could never start this without a tribute to the ancestors. This is true. So as the sister goes to get prepared, or should I say to get the material to be prepared, let me also speak to Baba Mosey, Hotep, my, my brother. Sister Queen Margot, you want to unmute and speak? Yes. Greetings. 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 Ah, we get that that sister energy in. Uh, Baba Mosey, you want to unmute and give us a greeting? You got to unmute, my brother. Baba Mosey, you got to unmute. Yes, I'm sorry. I <laughs> I uh, I was someplace else, and I uh, had to okay. rush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, greetings to everybody. Uh, Sister Margo, uh, you especially. Uh, Brother Harold. Greetings, Baba Mosey. Yes. Greetings, Alma. Uh, Baba, Zama, Baba Zama is muted, so you can't. Uh, you can't. Here she comes. Uh, Sister Tendai is going to give. Sister Tendai is going to give us libations, in order to celebrate this Independence Day with our ancestral spirits. I think is mandatory. Hey, Ru, Abayagani, Hotep, and I see Sister Paula coming. Yes, brothers. I um I got the big gun out today. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is Oshun's specialty. Ah, he likes the I, hot drink. I see. Okay, so yeah, so here we go. I need you all to make noise so that we can wake the ancestors up. I say, I say. And Black power. That's right. And let them know that we need their guidance and their assistance in everything that we do. I say that Black we power. let them know. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah. So that they can assist us on this plane of consciousness and all that we must do. I say. To help I us say. Each one in our own way to manifest our own destiny. I and say. As we work towards the collective destiny, divine independence, and self determination for our people. I say, that's so I, say. I say, and I'm giving paying homage to Mother Earth and Father Sky because we need the complement of male and female to have the creative energy to give us what it is that we need to move forward on. I say, I say. Ome Titi, Ili Titi, Ona Titi. Titi Ashu, Titi Ogun, Titi Obatala, Titi Shango, Titi Yemenja, Titi Oya, Titi Oshun, Titi Obrumala, Titi Orisha, Titi Abosun. Mojiba Olorun, Mojiba Lafi, Mojiba Oladumare, Mojiba Ibaye, Gumbobo Egni Baye, Mojiba Babalarisha, Ilarisha, Little Rock, Mojiba Bobo Eku, and Blasi Oladumare, Ibaye Olun. Kinkamashe Asheda Ashe, Kinkamashe Akoda Ashe, Kinkamashe Babalao Adejuan Lo Ekundaya Ashe, 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 And here is where we would call up all of our ancestors. 
Call upon all of our ancestors from the east, the north, the south, the west. We call upon all of our collective ancestors, beginning with the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. We call upon all of our collective ancestors uh, of those who have recently departed and those who have made their complete transition and live within the ancestor realm. Us as we begin this program this evening for them to guide us and to give us words and thoughts of wisdom and to help us to be able to be uplifted so that we are able to uplift each other and uplift all the things that it is that we must do to fulfill our promises to open the doors for ourselves as we move into our new transition which on this plane of consciousness is called death. Now, what I have done is I'm asking, before I say Kosi Iku, I'm saying is that I have paid homage, as I had said, to the earth and to the heavens. But I also have paid homage, most importantly, to Ola Dumare, Mother, Father, God, the creator of all that exists, everything that is. And when we call upon the names of the Orisha, we need to understand that in the spiritual realm, Orisha represent two things. One is is the concepts and the principles that we have to have in order to have a divine universe. So sure. that Oshun, because she's associated with water, you see, is the mother divine energy, that embiotic fluid and so on and so forth. So she rep we, they, the Orisha are the netters, the netter root. They are nature. And they also represent the concepts that we have to have in order to have a universe. If we didn't have concepts of righteousness and thoroughness and goodness and so on and so forth, and even, then there would be no, no construct for us to live within. I we call upon those energies because those are the energies that are required for us to be able to sustain us and for us to continue with creation. Yes. Then we call uh, Mother, Father, God again in terms of all of the names that God represents, creator of all that is, the owner of the universe, the maker of human beings, and so on and so forth. And then after that, we pay homage and to those who came before us. Asherah sure. and Akoda are those who are known to be the, the oldest priests that we know that follow the traditional way of in Africa. So we call their names so that they will not be forgotten. Okay. And then we will go into letting us call on the names of our ancestors, asking them to be with us. So I ask each one of you to call names of your personal ancestors that are in your family line and your lineage at this time. I call my mother, Betty Murphy. Ashe. Ashe. Ruth Ann Cook. Ashe. Ashe. Brenda Clayton. Ashe. Ashe. Hilda Dunn. Ashe. Ashe. Eddie Dunn. Ashe. 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 Frank Murphy, my father. Ashe. Albert Payne. Ashe. 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 James Palmer. Ashe. My grandfather. Ashe. And we call upon the collective ones that we refer to who have shown us and guided us and given us direction, like the right honorable Marcus, Marcus Messiah Garvey. Ashe. And Amy Jacques Garvey. And Amy Yashay. Amy Ashwood. Ashe. Coco Rashidi. Ashe. Ashe. Thomas Ashe. W. Harvey. Ashe. Ashe. Johnny Clark. Ashe. Ashe. James. Charles L. James. Ashe. Ashe. J. A. Rogers. Ashe. Ashe. Shake on to joke. Ashe. James Slappy. Sertima. Ashe. 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 And we call Baba Orefo. Ashe. And we call uh, Brother Ah. Ashe. And we call all of those who have worked within the DC community and the Philadelphia community and all across this country, across this nation, to, Ashe. to assist us to know that we haven't forgotten you, to know that we call your name so that your energy continues to live in the universe and to give us guidance. Ashe. I like to, I like to close by saying. I pray for that all of those Africans taken in violence, lost on the way to the Middle Passage, in the Middle Passage in this hemisphere, that they will be found and returned to God Almighty for complete healing, that they might be able to continue on and complete their cycle of life, death, 
and rebirth. I say. I say. I say. I say at the end. Kosi Iku, Kosi Aron, Kosi Afo, Kosi Fatibu, Kosi Adina, Kosi Ba, Kosi Ayo, Kosi Ashe, Kosi Ajo Wun, Kosi Wahala Hala, Ariku Babawa, Ariku Mamala, Ashe. So Ashe. what I have said is let us not see, you know, in our tradition, we don't believe in the devil. We believe in anything that is the opposite of good. So I'm asking that we not see death, we not see illness, that we not see poverty, that we not see distraught and stress that we not see any of those things that will cause us harm and allow us to be able to leave here the same way that we came. As we Ashe. say, Ashe, and so let it be. Ashe. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Go ahead, Baba Moses. Hit it. <laughs> yes, Baba. That's why I said I need you to make some noise. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, such a spiritual. Asante Sana, Sister Tendai. There's no way we start without you. <laughs> it's just no way. A, a, not only a journey, but continuing to keep us connected to that which strengthens us, guides us, and that which helps us to see tomorrow and understand the actions of today. I say. I say. I say. Um, in the spirit of ensuring that the, not that the spirit, but that the tone for African Independence Day is set, because it's important that we do that. Although we, we claim and bring forth always the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey without the sister, without the queen mother, we would be in, we wouldn't be having the program. So that's why we bring in Sister Tendai to start with her tribute and libations. But I would also like to bring in Sister Tendai to set the tone for the meeting. I would like you to share, my sister, on African Independence Day, your thoughts and motivation. Woo! It's an uh, it's an uplifting day, Baba. Uh, it's at the same time that it's uplifting. It's also a sad day in certain ways because when we started working on African independence, most of us were children and some of us weren't even born. Okay, I'm on there not born yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here we are this many years later. We're commemorating it and celebrating it. And I think that one of the things we need to do is to think about the fact that the, el the oldest uh, in the country that became independent first was Ghana, uh -huh. and that's 1954. So we haven't even had 100 years, really, no. of independence to restructure what was lost. Because, you know, we existed and had all of these... Uh, not just temples and ways of living and so on and so forth, but we have government structures. Yes. We had an organization. Yes. And we had a way of living in balance and harmony with the universe. <sighs> All of those things during the Ma'afa, we lost. And even after independence, rather than to try to restructure and go back and get those things, it, it appears as though in many instances, we instead tried to recreate what our colonizers had given us. So we just basically warmed over what they were already doing. And I like that, the way you said the warmed over <laughs> what they were doing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because that's basically what we have done. And as a result of it, it hasn't worked for us. And so as an African people, we're still struggling with the structures and we're still struggling with each other as a result of it. Gabriel. Because um, there was no, all of a sudden, those who were enemies were thrown in the, in the boat together. <laughs> and in many instances, forced to create us. So here we have, here we are born with internal conflict, okay? Born with all of the issues that came with the Ma'afa. 
And so here we are at this point, acknowledging the independence of our, our countries and recognizing that even though they're politically free, they're not economically free. I say. Because they're not economically free, then they're not free in any other way. True. And, and the other thing is, even though we hear, you know, one of the things we did when we started IBMAC was we went back to Africa to teach them how to sow and create for us over here. And it created a whole new economic structure because in Ghana, they had stopped weaving kente. Mm. But we over here were started wearing the kente strips. It put everybody back in business. So we didn't, you know, I'm saying understanding the ties and how we can begin to work together. We over here, because we have been separated from that which is us, which is our, our, our essence, our being, our families, and so on and so forth, we have constantly struggled trying to find it. True. So we have always been trying to reach out to reconnect. In Africa, those who are learning do the same thing, but, those, but the masses are just like the masses here, and they are, they are unknowing. Whenever I have visited Africa, I found myself lecturing and teaching the same African history that I would be teaching to our students here. Mm. The, the knowledge is not there because as I had said, the structures that even after independence, the structures remain. That after the the physical col uh, phys yeah, yeah, the yeah, colonial the structure changed, but therefore the foundational information never changed and therefore it was never our structure as you so eloquently put, it became, uh, I think the terminology was warmed over uh, colonialism. <laughs> yes. And so the neo-colonialism is still alive and well. Oh, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, and then I'm saying, you know, we and we agreed to things, you know, my greatest concern, even folks keep saying that we should not be concerned about it. But my concern is just uh, as Dr. Clark talked about how uh, we in, in the continent aligned ourselves uh, with uh, the Muslims, with the Arabs, basically, not the Muslims. Not but the Muslims, but the Arabs. Yes, ma'am. The Arabs to try to get the uh, colonialists off our back and we just replaced them. So yes, man. <laughs> it, it, my concern is we're doing the same thing with China. Yeah, we, we don't. We, Independence Day means independence, the structure developed by those ancestors who had some understanding. And yet today, what you're pointing, what you're, what you're gracing us with, the pearls that you're gracing us with, is a greater degree of understanding of what independence would mean, and therefore where we are as we try to travel that road and stay on that journey to independence. Yeah. Uh, and I'm saying, I guess also what I'm saying, uh, as all of us know here, is you, especially Baba Mosi too, know that even when one has declared independence, if we don't then begin to live it, it isn't, it's not alive, it, it doesn't exist. Does not. It's just there. And I'm saying it was knowledgeable for me to go back and look at um, the declaration. Oh, Lord, I can't think of it. You know that the French, those who colonized in the, in the French, French countries, the African nations that were colonized by the French. And that they have, have had to sign this declaration that has not allowed them even to- uh, Get away from the French economy. Not, you know, they don't even make their own money. No, they, they're connected it to It has to be to made France. in France. Yes. They've had to bank, put all their money in France. Then France is, is the one who's in charge of investing the yep. money so they they also just like the banks then they benefit from the investment not the african countries so right. they're making trillions of dollars off of those countries every year while our people are suffering in in every way so someone's on the phone nisa may his sister uh someone's on the phone who came who came yeah, in mary bolta just came in Okay, I'm, I'm, Hotel Mama Bosa. I apologize, Sister doing? Tinda. I just wanted to acknowledge who was on the line. Do yeah. you, do you, you. I'm finished. I just wanted to get started because there's, there's so much that we could could discuss. 
um, about African independence and about where we've got to go and where we are in the struggle and in the structure. We also can bring in our brother Renoko in terms of what he has done and what he dedicated and how we can move forward uh, with his work uh, in terms of the continuing the effort towards moving towards our complete and total independence, which means self-determination. Yes, ma'am, without a doubt. Asante Sana, again, the, the power mm -hmm. of the energy of the queens to set the tone. Baba Mosey. Mm -hmm. Baba Mosey. Yes, sir. Calling, to, calling for yes, you, my sir. brother. Calling for you, my brother. <laughs> OK. Uh, as to how I see Af uh, African Independence Day, uh, I see it as that day when uh, we re-immerse ourselves into what Darwinism is all about. Because if we do that, the word self-reliance, we will be in that, that vat of self-reliance, that liquid, that, what is called self-reliance in Garveyism, where as a people rely on ourselves, it's Baba it's Mosey, people, I'm going to interrupt you. you. Baba Mosey, your, your bandwidth is low, and, and Ken, I'm going to ask Baba Mosey. independence. Okay, maybe okay. that's better. Go, because your bandwidth yes. is low, and it's hard for us to understand you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, uh, this, I, I, thought, I, I thought I had one of those. You're better right? now. <laughs> so speak now. Better You're better now. now. Okay. All right. Well, I, 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 I was saying that uh, immersing ourselves into Garveyism, this is the day for it. Thinking in the sense of us being self reliant as a people, as a people internationally or globally, thinking of ourselves as being able to depend on each other for sustenance for our, our, our industrial progress, our intellectual progress, that we don't have to look towards somebody else to say that, yes, you're doing a good job, or yes, that's a good thing to do, or yes, you're right, or yes, you're wrong. You know, in the British Commonwealth, they have, a, I think it's called, a, there's a court in London. It's like the Supreme Court. People are, you know, they have cases are tried in these former colonies. And the, 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 the system is set up so that you can't go to a judge in the colony to, to say, well, okay, this case is <laughs> you're guilty or not guilty. If, <clears throat> if there's an appeal, the appeal is made to this court somewhere in London. There are some of the countries, maybe I think India and, uh, and some African countries where they, they try to, the, 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 the republics where they, they might have gotten out of it. But those Commonwealth countries, those countries that still has <clears throat> the queen as the head of state, they still go to a court in London to get the final say. So you're not independent if you have to, if you're doing that. True. You know, yeah. I mean, how are you independent? So I mean, Garvey is has called on us to think our, of of the freedom. Having that freedom is relying on ourselves, self reliance. Believe in yourself. You know, you you don't need anybody else to tell you who you are. I say. You don't need anybody else to tell you what your history is. Because they're, you know. They're, yeah, they won't tell you your history anyway. They'll tell uh, you the story as they see it. That's true. And you know, it, it wasn't so long ago when we had uh, white folks challenging uh, some of our historians about Egypt 
being a land of Africans. I say. Of black people. And they and they were they were ready to go to court to say that Greece is the, the place where you know <laughs> civilization started. I, that's true. I mean, they, and they, yeah. It, it furthers Sister Tendai's point that our lack of understanding as nations became independent in words not to be independent in constitution or in structure. Uh, her terminology, again, I find so amazing, warmed over colonialism, was therefore <laughs> viewed as freedom. And even the thrust of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey was to build an African independent democratic government based on African principles with a foundation of African knowledge. That's why we celebrate August 31st, because it was designed to raise us above the level of oppression to a level to where we could begin to develop all of the skills necessary to seek and be independent and control our own destiny. Garveyism, or Marcus Garvey, through universal African nationalism, was putting forth the fundamental principles of a concrete change. That's what was laid out. And how we determine the knowledge and how it was used, even by us, was because what we then understood is that that cost for freedom would not be a light lift, but a heavy one. And warmed over, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it, warmed over colonialism was the easy one, which is why neo-colonialism and today the new neo-colonialism see neo-colonialism we started to, to challenge a little bit through through the 20th century but new neo-colonialism is what is also written into those constitutions where you have to bank you have to put your money in you have to deal with a european investment so it is crucial that we understand that i'm i'm going to move from you my brother Okay. Because we have uh, Sister Paula who jumped on the line. I'm going to call on Sister Paula. I just love having that, that female energy, that femininity. And we say femininity does not mean a, a something weaker than, but I see the African queen as stronger than. They oh. are the foundations yeah, they are. They are the foundations okay. for us to grow. They are African women arise. Sister Paula. Oh, wow. Uh, greetings, uh, all my brothers and sisters on uh, African Independence Day. I I'm thinking um, that independence is distinct from emancipation I say. and I sometimes I think that people conflate the two uh, and I guess our holidays are for black people or our observances are more towards emancipation and with emancipation you are basically resting yourself from the control of the other, but the other is also agreeing <laughs> to, to that status for you at that point. It certainly doesn't mean, I'm not trying to downplay all of the, the, the death and suffering and fighting and organizing that has gone into so many countries uh, emancipating themselves. This is not easy and never has been, but it is still different from independence, which is something that you declare uh, 
uh, what's the word? Um, I'm thinking of a legal word, sui sponte. That means a, a sweet, sweet generous. That means that you just say, this is what I am. And then you act and I mean, operate yes. like that. Because yes. that is what you have said that you are. Yes. So um, I, I think over here, uh, in, in the same way that the 4th of July is a major holiday for Europeans here, uh, because they decided that that was going to be the day that they were going to be independent from uh, Great Britain. I mean, there might be some basis, maybe some constitution or preamble to some declaration was written at that point. But they themselves said that this was going to be the date that they were going to consider themselves to be independent. Uh, our emanci uh, I think we emphasize our emancipation days more, like Juneteenth yeah. uh, is, is <laughs> an emancipation day. I mean, we were actually told <laughs> yeah, on, there's some history challenges there, that, but yes, that, man, that, go ahead, that go we ahead. were that we were free. You know, we we were told that, uh, and, I, and I'm not saying that those. Oh people, no, please, you 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 may speak how you the choose. People who, yes, who, who who came to let those African descended people know that most of them were black soldiers. So it's not that people were not fighting for this. Uh, I don't ever want to 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 be anybody to think that I'm saying that. And I, and I think the, the, the whole idea of spilling blood, fighting for freedom is a, is a, is a very scary concept for me. I'm a uh, blood and battle and guns and things like that, frankly, scare me. And I, I will be very frank about, about that. So I certainly do not want to downplay any of those freedom fighters. But we have to uh, just recognize the difference between independence and emancipation. And I think with independence, we can take small baby steps and we can make small, very small goals for ourselves. I think sometimes we want a lot. I mean, we want everything. We deserve everything. We're entitled to everything. We're the most oppressed people on the face of the earth. But it is, is going to be a very, very slow, and steady type of progress. And sometimes I think we need to make smaller uh, goals so that they are attainable so that we can celebrate our successes. A lot of times I think we are focused on what we haven't done and we probably need to just do some more concrete thinking together so we can plan small things that are doable uh, within the um, uh, within the abilities and the resources that we have so that we can uh, be able to celebrate those small baby steps. And sometimes if you watch the development of a baby, a baby takes baby steps before they uh, take giant steps or before they run, before they sprint, before they jump, before they do anything. And I think, uh, uh, I think we probably have to start with smaller steps as well in order to be able to celebrate our successes. Uh, I say, I say, I, I would only add that I believe we took baby steps in 1920, which <laughs> is 100 years ago, and we are beyond baby steps. So we took them and we understood that. I agree that you, you start where you were, but the first thrust is also to have the concept that independence can be achieved and it can only be achieved once one thoroughly understands those challenges that you face. Our, a hundred years ago, there was one free country on the continent of Africa. Today, there are 55. But today, there's still no freedom for Africans to, across the world because there is no government structure for African people 
based on African principles. However, in 1920, those 25,000 Africans taking the first baby step, or maybe we could say a giant leap forward for us as a people, said we deserve to be independent and to have our own nation, which means we have to write, speak truth to power, honor those who went before us because every ancestor, every spiritual being that was called went before us. So we're merely moving that legacy to a point of achievability. And I think we have to, as you said, you take the baby steps. I think we now at the jumping stage. Mm -mm, at the jumping stage. Can yeah. you answer a question for me, please? I can certainly Bye. try. Why was the Honorable Marcus Garvey able to create this huge, he didn't create it, and that's the wrong term, but whatever the term is, I'm not saying he did it independently and by himself, please, my goodness. But how was how was he able to uh with his with his cohorts and his other people able to pull together um and develop such a huge mass movement uh in the 20s and it it seems so difficult now is it because of uh the communications are instantaneous is it because uh Black people's economic situation has quote unquote improved. And so it is, is less of um, um, less of a, a, a push for many black people to be involved in uh, in in substantive change. I mean, what is the difference between now the attitude of people, not the effort? Because I know the effort is still ongoing, but what is the difference in the attitude and maybe the political situation? I, I think you're adding, I think you, you're technically answering your question. Because in the 1920s, the concepts, the ideas were fresh and not new, but fresh. And our ability to communicate was different, but yet it spread and there was a commitment to a political, cultural, economical change. We had not accepted completely warmed over capitalism. We had not accepted warmed over racism. You see, we were still being lynched. So the concept uh. that you could raise your own army in order to protect yourself fit because I can now express myself as a warrior king or as a man because I'm able to stand up in my uniform with my brothers and my sisters now, let's not get it twisted, mm -hmm. and defend our community. See, so we had not said it's okay to integration. We had not accepted neocolonialism. We were fresh and from forced incarceration. You see, 1865 to 1920, not that long of a stretch. But in that time from 1865, where we realized that they said you were, but you weren't, those conditions of incarceration maintain themselves. That's why our prisons in this country, I say our prisons, the prisons in this country build roadways because they put black men in prison for being a black man, period. Not that much different than today, but today they still try to use a different court system. But as long as we accept their court system as just, we still have work to do. So today, we now, whereas we didn't have the multi-billionaires walking in the room with the, what they thought was the right white person, we do today. Whereas our media presence was like non-existence, now you have one. But what you don't have is the message of African independence, the message across all of these lines. They're, they're the messages out there. There are many who speak to it, <laughs> but see, Marcus Messiah Garvey, not the first to speak to it, but the one whose voice and organizing and building had the better skills. Today, 
we have better tools. Mm. We just have to use them in a better way. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I say, Sister Mary Bolton. I say I, I got a lot of sisters on this call, so I, I'm I'm going. To, I'm Tendai said, ride that feminine energy, Sister Mary Bolton. You're, you're muted, Mary Bolton. Okay, I guess she'll come through in a minute. Uh, Sister Margo. <laughs> there you go. I agree with um, everything that everyone is sharing uh, with Mama Tendai and Baba Mosi and you. Um, I I think that we we celebrate this day as an independent day, but I think we won't truly be independent until we are economically independent from this system. I say, and that that is what I truly believe. I say. Because independence will mean we build our structure based on our cultural values and the principles of Ma'at in a democratic fashion. And therefore, we determine where we go, who we are, right. what we do. When Sister Tendai brought up the brought up how Kente was not being made in Ghana, I believe, sister, please correct me, in Ghana, and yet then, and, and sister Tendai, I'm not dating us, but I think you're going back to like the 60s when- Actually we, in the 90s. Oh, oh so you, 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 you see, because it started in the 60s yeah. too, where they started and then I guess it stopped. And then we start getting the fake kente, mm -hmm. you know, with a little black car, because that was easier and easier to stand around and hold on, hold his form. So then again, in the 90s, we say, hold it, wait a minute, who makes the best kente? And we go back home and we put sisters and hopefully some brothers to work making kente. Yeah. Sister Tendai, you unmuted yourself. So that tells me you have something to say. I was just going to say that as we're talking about it and, and we're celebrating this day of African independence, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you all and I'm rethinking that, uh -oh. in, that our independence is a process and yes. we're dealing with it as though it has already occurred and that it's, a, that it's, an, uh, that it's an independence is the end game. And it's not. Nope. It is, a, it is a process that we are going through and we are at various, we are at different stages of our independence. Yeah. And I'm saying, when I was talking about uh, the colonialism warmed over, I'm saying <laughs> basically that the structure that we live in here is not our structure. And, but, you know, so I'm saying, but there's a whole contingent of us, Mama Paula, that, you know, it has to fit into that. And even those those of us who know better, we still have to do some things. I mean, I'm working with historically black colleges and universities, and uh, I'm looked at as, as a how can I say it? I'm looked at as as an odyssey when I appear on campus because um, I'm I have my African clothes on. I got nappy hair, <laughs> you know. I, I don't have false eyelashes and all that kind of thing. So uh, among among our own, you know, we we have not uh, recognized. Uh, ourselves because so that it's easier you know because the the masses are somewhere else because of the technology and everything else that that we have access to that we didn't have access to I you know, yeah during the 1920s the things we didn't have access to i think helped to bring us closer absolutely and it was because in the 19 if i may two things <laughs> yes independence is a process Celebrating August 31st as Independence Day is celebrating the beginning of the process going back to 1920. But also in 1920, as you pointed out, there were, there were more oppressive, more visible, more visible, mm -hmm. more tangible, oppressive traits that allowed the conversation of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey to become such a 
with sprint boards, such a pivot, such a step, because he began to talk to you and say to you, you can do what they have done, but you have to do it for you. Uh -huh. So now today, when we say we must do what we must do, they look to see whether or not they can evaluate your capabilities of doing it without understanding that we have to do it together because it is a process that has to move us collectively together. See, so that's why I say we have better tools than the 1920s. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily use our tools better, but we have them. 1920s, there was no at least for us, yeah. no virtual communications. Mm -hmm. See, we, we couldn't, we had to find a way to get together. But Marcus Garvey and those men and women, and I, and I take nothing from any other entity, but those men and women, those 25,000 men and women, women and men of African descent, women and men of African descent, who came and said, we declare this our Independence Day, to me was saying this first step is to plant the seed in your mind that you have the responsibility to build an independent nation. Now you have 55 nation states, as I call them, who signify nations, and yet our separations are more than lines drawn on a map. And we still have to overcome the challenges that our ancestors faced, those who came before us, not those who are the spiritual ancestral that we gave homage to because they lived it. We lost it. We have to recapture it. And then we have to teach it to help us all understand. Um, it's Marsha, Marsha Coleman. Sister Marsha? Yes. Hi, care good, to share. good evening. Care to share? Um, yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, can we can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just reflecting on my experiences in South Africa uh, because that's such a good example of of how people, you know, had this, you know, I think amazing vision. The, the African National Congress had this amazing vision of a new South Africa um, arising from the depth of European barbarism, um, the depth of, um, of the, 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 the cruelty and the sickness of these Europeans coming to Africa and making a decision. I mean, bold decision. They, they, one thing about Europeans, I must admit, is that they don't think small, they think big. Um, and they think so big that I think sometimes we're just over overwhelmed by just how enormous they think. I mean, when you think about even, you know, what they call the slave trade, which, you know, we call, you know, European barbarism, um, the idea that they're going to transport millions of people from Africa to another continent, that's not small. I mean, that's huge. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, you know, that the new world needs the technology and the intellect and the energy um, of these people. And then they go about building ships. They go about, you know, creating sailors. They go about the entire infrastructure of transporting, kidnapping, all these millions of Africans and bringing them to, to, to different parts of the world. Or even the idea of the Europeans coming to, you know, what is now called the United States, seeing other people living in this country and deciding we're gonna kill all of them. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna literally take over the United States or what we call the United States. Um, so the same thing is true basically in South Africa where the Europeans come and they see the wealth of, of, of particularly Southern Africa, South Africa, and they make the decision, even though I don't have any relatives in this country, I don't have any you know, dime in this fight, 
I'm going to control this land and I'm going to control it by any means necessary. So if I got to bring my tanks, I have to bring my armies. If I have to bring whatever it is, I am going to control this entire country. And I am going to make the people who live here uh, work for me. Very bold thoughts, very bold. I mean, you can't even, I mean, it's so sick that you almost can't wrap your, your head around this. Um, so so the, the question in my mind is on, on this day is how do we get our children to think with the same level of, of just enormous vision and power and, 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 um, and um, I guess the word is, you know, privilege that they have, it's like what Malcolm said, that we have a right to this earth. We have a right to live on this earth as human beings. And if, and if we don't live on this earth as human beings, nobody else has a right to live on this earth. I mean, those are very, very powerful concepts. And, you know, one of the things that I think Europeans did so well by, by hiding our history, erasing our history, killing people who had these visions, deporting people who had these kinds of visions is that, you know, we, we formed this amnesia of who we are. And therefore, you know, we're, we're sort of talking about civil rights. We're talking about, you know, these kinds of things as opposed to talking about ownership and how we're gonna recreate and how we're gonna manifest these visions. So, you know, the question for me is always, how do we get our children to think really big so that they begin to believe that the earth is theirs and the fullness thereof, and mm. that they have a right to every single thing that is created, and they have a right to create everything that their minds can possibly imagine and bring that into being. And that's sort of what I'm thinking about today. Uh, and Jamie, oh, I appreciate your, your comments and that thought process that you spoke about. Our ancestors had it too, yes. which is how we were able to create within the sphere the type of culture that educated those who were uneducated and also gave them that fortitude in order for them to come to the point that they have because that Caucasianoid was in the caves, in the mountains, as we were building the foundations for civilizations. Mm -hmm. You used a term that said, uh, we didn't remember, it, it'll come to me, but what oh, I wanted amnesia. to, amnesia. And the reason that struck me is during convention, uh, a brother in LA, and for those of you who are somewhat old enough, would remember Apollo 20, the European 20th trip to the moon. And on the moon, on that 20th trip, they found a spacecraft the size of a football field. And, and inside were two corpses, of course, deteriorating because the spaceship had not been moved. And they brought one of those corpses back. And the corpse that they brought back was, of course, of the pilot who had electronic, for lack of a better terminology, connected where they were operating the aircraft, the spacecraft, with their mind. And that science determined that the corpse was over a billion years old. Oh, and by the way, it was a sister operating the aircraft. You say, what's that got to do with Independence Day? What it has to do is with the thought process that you can achieve the greatness and handle the responsibility of independence. But you must honor that which makes it so. And that would be our sister queens. See, so to get our children to understand and think global, not 
warmed over colonialism global, because that's a global thought too. I want to be I want to be the most respected musician, and I can do that. That's a global thought. But you see, that's not global in the sense of independence, because it does not say I control the industry mm -hmm. so that we move ourselves collectively forward, and therefore we add to the cultural value with what we do. Mm -hmm. You see, so the billion-year corpse, and you said amnesia? Yeah, I say we've caught more than amnesia. I know there's another um, mental issue that comes over courses of time that causes you to forget who you are. And I think we suffer from that. But I think in 1920, when our ancestors gave the charge for independence, it woke us up. But our oppressor is, is, is good at what he does. Mm -hmm. See, we can't take that away. He's good at what he does. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he says, okay, you, you want independence? I'll, I'll give you fake independence. Do it like me. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, okay, you, you want to do it a little different? Then the, the, the Arab wasn't better than, he was more ruthless, but maybe you want to do it like that. And then me and the Arab can work to make sure you stay subservient even though you believe you independent. You see, our Independence Day is a celebration of all of the things that are important for us to do. I'm, I see since my brother Singor is getting on. Sister Tendai, you unmuted. I know again, that means you have something to say, but I'm going to stop and try to bring brother Singor in and then I will come to you. Brother Singor Baye, first assistant president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Associations and African Community League Rehabilitating Committee 2020. Can you speak to us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, greetings, brothers and sisters, and thank you, President General uh, Kelly Krumah. And I want to uh, thank all of those folks who helped us get uh, finish our 63rd International Convention, the first of RC 2020 Rehabilitating Committee. Brothers and sisters, it's our Independence Day. We have faced many, many times all kinds of different so-called holidays, holy days, et cetera. But this particular day is super important because we ain't got our sovereignty and independence yet. However, in 1920, the right excellent honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey and the Universal Negro Improvement Association delegates who came to the uh, first convention of the UNIACL made it clear in the Declaration of Rights of Negro African Peoples of the World that today is our Independence Day. That means August the 31st every year. I also want to hail up all the Black August folk and everybody celebrating Black August, everybody celebrating Mosiah in the UK, Mosiah Month and African Heritage Month. August is a very powerful time. However, August the 31st is the most powerful time because once African people north, south, east and west of the world totally recognize that our independence comes only through self-determination and self-reliance and self-development for ourselves, then we must understand that all the other holidays and all the other so-called days that people celebrate are not as important because we're still on the bottom of the rung. To get up from that, we need unity around the world. So brothers and sisters, it is very important for us to recognize August the 31st every year and to continue to recognize it as our Africans did in 1920 going forward. I wanna thank the President General and Killian Krumah for constantly standing firm and focusing on all the issues that we need to be focusing on to rehabilitate our whole race. And the Rehabilitating Committee of the UNIACL had an excellent convention. I also would be remiss if I did not mention our traveling ambassador, Brother Renoko Rashidi, who I had the opportunity, several of us did, our international organizer, our Minister of Information, and myself to attend his home going. On September the 11th, we will carry out his uh, spiritual journey. I wanna thank all of the people who are in this Zoom right now, because keeping it real and keeping tr speaking truth to power is the only way we're gonna wake up the X generation and the millennium generation to could carry out the work that many of our ancestors have been doing and that we continue to do. So with that say, I say up you mighty race. Don't be content with the food of chickens. There's nothing that we cannot accomplish. We will accomplish 
this unity on the planet. The question is, is how soon? The question is, is how long? Well, as long as we still fall under the, the so-called colonial, neo-colonialism and colonialism and allow Yorugu to continue to divide us. So we say unite, unite. Africa must unite. One God, one aim, one destiny. I say. And and don't don't go nowhere. We'll be back. Sister Tendai. No, I was just gonna speak to the fact when we were talking about um uh the ruthlessness of the of the European. I'm I'm saying don't forget now when we got amnesia, how we got amnesia. It was a <laughs> it was a systematic approach to being yes, able to make sure that uh, all of those things that we had prior to being enslaved that we no longer had. Many of the uh, those who, first of all, the majority of people who were enslaved and brought to the New World, only ten percent came to the U.S. I say. That's where in the islands in Central and South America. Okay. When they came, many of them came as children, mm -hmm. five mm -hmm. years of age and younger. There are pictures, I have pictures that I have gone back and looked at some of the uh, slave ships and they were children. So, you know, how, you know, how do we expect uh, a, a child to fight against an adult when culturally they've been taught to respect an adult? The other thing is remember that before then a person was actually sold into slavery, they were done what was called seasoned. And in seasoning, they took several years to erase their memory, to take away the names, to beat them into submission. And the only thing that they could do that they remembered was what they did at home, which was an agricultural society. So they already knew how to do, they knew how to plant. They knew mm -hmm. how to grow. They knew how to do those things. So that was, even though it was a burden, it's something that they already knew how to do, even if they didn't know the language. But it's important for us to understand what seasoning actually did. So it was a systematic system that took everything away uh, from us in terms of, of our memory and our recollection. And then after you have several generations, like you did in the United States, where they stopped bringing in fresh folks who had been, who had known what freedom was and began breeding people, they had no idea and no concept oh, of freedom. what freedom was. They were born into slavery and they died in it. And it was intergenerational. It went from one to the other. But the importance of understanding <laughs> and seasoning took several years for them to beat you enough for you to forget everything that you already knew. I'd say several generations of beating did that. Yes. Several but I'm saying that, that was done initially yeah. before one was even, you know, yeah, no, understood. To become no. a good slave. Yeah, well, you, you made a couple of good points, but before I, I speak to that, Sister Mary Bolton, are you going to speak to us this time? Do I still have her? Yeah, I have her. Okay. Mary Bolton, when you unmute yourself, please speak. To, to your, just, just to carry your point further, once they began to, if, you, if I can, grow their own people, they grew and they grew you to mentally accept the condition because they wiped away the concept of freedom. And yet that concept did remain with many of us because that's why we took steps that we did, but we understood freedom based on those who oppressed us. We understood their freedom. Your warmed over neo-colonialism or colonialism, if I may. We understood that. And we understood what that meant by way of freedom. But our ancestors, our ancestors across the board, barring none in different locations at different times, understood the need for us to recapture our memory, recapture our culture, and use that as a springboard to independence, which is where yeah. in 1920, 25,000 people brought into play that, that springboard because there was like, we okay. got to replant in, in our minds. We have to recapture in our minds who we are, 
from once whence we come, what we did before we were put in this situation, and therefore in acknowledging our going forward, which is why we have to teach Independence Day 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. You see, what, what was July 4th? July 4th was an example I believe you used that they determined July 4th was going to be their Independence Day. And that's once they said that was the day, that was it. Okay, we didn't determine Juneteenth to be our day. They told us again, that's your day. They signed the, legis signed the legislation and say, see, it's all right for you to do that. That don't make it mine. What makes it mine is when I determine and I take the bold step and I do what's necessary to elevate the concept and thought process of independence in African people. Our sisters and brothers, 25,000 strong, did that in 1920. They say, we determine this is our independence day. We have a responsibility to ensure that that concept stays alive. We keep it alive. We manifest it every day by making sure that those things that are contrary be challenged. If we want to reach, I think someone called them the X generation, the millennials, but our youth across the board, we need independent institutions that allow our children to think independently from a system that says to you, this is your place. We will let you rise to a certain point, but accept that that rise does not rise to the point of controlling your own destiny. Here in America, when they allowed a man of color to rise, they did not allow him to control the destiny, even of the nation that the office said he had a right to control because they have built in factors to limit what you do, what you can do and what you can't do. They don't just think from one point to another. They think hundreds of years in advance. We have to think hundreds of years in advance, which is one reason why we of RC 2020 are planning and building for the next 100 years. And I'm going to say that within that plan, we have to build for the next 1,000 years because it's going to take us that long to get from step A, wake up, to step C, move up. It's a challenge and a change coming challenge and the change coming. And that's what Independence Day is about, the challenge and the change. It's about moving forward in such a way that we can determine and do determine our own destiny based on our African-centered cultural values, based on the democratic principles of Ma'at. That's what we have. That's, that's the road. See, we have the roadmap. Marcus, Marcus Garvey and those men and women helped give us that. Our ancestors that you called on, give us that. They say, if you pay attention to what we have done, you will then know what to do that will move you to the next level, which is why when you call the ancestors, you're calling them for guidance, healing, development, growth, show you truth, and raise you to the next level. Our Independence Day is geared toward making sure that we as an African people we, you know, and, and I, so let me spice this up. We, as a people of African descent, Negroes in the world by definition of race, not by definition of culture, not by definition of location, just by definition of race, because I need my African scientists to give me my racial definition that changes that scope. And that within itself, will begin to change the minds of our Watoto. And they say in the African village, is the Watoto okay? If the answer is no, then the village is not okay. 
Brother Singor, coming back. I see you muted. I know you're busy. All right, Sister Paula. Brother Zama, I know you're out there. <laughs> All right, there you go, Brother Baba Mosey. Come on in here. Okay, now um, we've, we've, we've covered that matter of independence and uh, the Declaration of Independence. But uh, this is also a time factor. This declaration was made at the time when we had just two African countries that were, um, that could be called uh, independent countries, Liberia and, and Ethiopia. Mm. Yeah, well. I, 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 Ethiopia, <laughs> I yes. Ethiopia, yeah. yes. Liberia, but okay. It's, you know, okay. It's, just like, it's just like the so called independent countries I, now. Yes, Somebody I, gave you a flag. <laughs> And and you know you know they they created a little currency for you and then and but you can't buy anything with it uh, un, unless you have their currency and and so you know but putting that aside um, the African countries that consider themselves independent today with their different independent days days celebrating independence um how how do we get them to look at what we're saying august 31st is that day that we all should celebrate as african independence day okay yes you've all had your independence but can we come together at some point and say this is the day we all celebrate as the day of independence for all africans really and truly I, I, to, to, I don't know if that's, I, I, I'll take that as a question and be honored to give an, a response and anyone else can, can give a response. When we as a people mm. have an understanding of who we are and have an understanding of the oppression that we've experienced mm -hmm. across the board, have the true understanding of our history. And when we continue to espouse the cry, our Independence Day, then we are able to raise that level. At some point, as we sit at the table, uh, sit around the table of discussion, African men and women will have their own concept of independence, but the concept of independence that we are espousing is the independence of us as a race. So that definition becomes crucial. The independence of a race. Our ancestors came from across geographical locations and said, this is our independence day. It is our responsibility as we continue to carry that torch to make it so, because they cut across various languages, cultures, and journeyed here to make that statement. That becomes a part of what is important for us to teach in order to raise that concept. African Independence Day, again, at some point, we may take that name Africa and not use it, because historically it may be a challenge, but I'm going to say for this conversation, African Independence Day is that. And that's the message that you push forward. And as you continuously push that message forward, you work to make that change. You see, there was no independence on the continent of Africa in 1920. Ethiopia being the only nation there was no independence. What we have to understand is that <laughs> we fall under the anvil where we have lost the knowledge. And I don't think we lost it. The knowledge was stolen from you, prevented from you, hidden from you, and even misinterpreted to you so that you began to accept warmed over colonialism as the mythology to freedom. Brother Singo, I see you visible. Yeah, I'm visible. You know, uh, 
brothers and sisters, it, it is just so critical for us to really continue to speak truth to power on this this this, this strong day. Uh, I want to thank Mama Tendai for always being present and always sharing words of wisdom. Of course, UPG and Baba Mosi, and I don't know who all else is on on the Zoom, but uh, anybody out there in Facebook land, it's time to rally around the red, black, and green brothers and sisters. It's time to close ranks. It's time to get serious about our own self reliance and to take our own destiny in our own hands. We've been down pressed long enough for us to understand that it's critical for us to do for us what we should do for ourselves and not to expect someone else to give us anything. Yeah, we want reparations, but we want internal reparations. We want internal rest restitution. What, what we want to restore ourselves internally to Mahat and Mobutu. We have to go back Sankofa and fetch our glorious uh, uh, ability uh, maybe not build pyramids, but at least get back to the ability of building for ourselves. And, and we did that to so many dynasties. But I also want to make it clear that our, our struggle or our, our triumphs to rise up did not begin during the transatlantic slave trade or the Arab slave trade or any other slave trades that took place on the planet. It began millions upon millions of years ago. And, and some people who just informed us at our convention that it was actually billions of years ago. And y'all get ready for this. Two sisters. Yeah, two we talked sisters. about that. We talked oh, about that. Already touched yeah, on yeah, it? yeah, we okay, touched well, on I'm it. But, but you, no, it no, no, you can go right back to it. It ain't because, nothing wrong with that. I just wanted you to know that we did touch on it. Because black women rule and have always ruled, but because they were disempowered and their and their, and their, and their spouses, African men, hoodwinked to go into the wrong direction. Consequently, we've suffered these last 400 or so years of not having peace and harmony amongst our people, not being able to protect our youth, not being able to stand firm with our women and be clear that we are, we are the true human beings of the planet. We are the first rulers of the planet. We can change all things that have gone awry, including the, the mess up of the planet. So when we say Independence Day, we're talking about getting back to Mahat and Mobutu and getting back to what really, really helps us stay connected into the cosmos of reality with our most high, our ancestors, the Orishas, the Obasun. It is critical that we get reconnected to that because they haven't gone nowhere. They, they are working their mojo. They've kept us where we are all this time. But while we on this side, it's our job to make it really, really plain to the African people of the world that we can, we will, and must do what is required to get back to our traditional greatness. I say, I say, Independence Day, Independence Day, 100 years in the making and 100 years to go. Yes. They yeah, both. Because <laughs> we're planning now as others have planned you see when they came out the caves and we educated them they began to plan now we have to plan and we have to plan and plant the seeds so that our children understand we can break this cycle of violence in our community by teaching truth to power That's right teaching us who we are we can break the cycle of female oppression by black males by spreading truth to power. See, that's, that's, we're able to do that. We're able to put in place the type of communications that's crucial for change. Again, we have better tools than 100 years ago. Absolutely. But we, also have, we also have a stronger challenge than 100 years ago. Because, and, and Sister Tendaye set this stage, because those who accepted warmed over colonialism as a pathway to freedom didn't work for freedom. They worked for acceptance and integration. And I want to be OK. You see, once we stay vigilant to independence, which was what began before 1920, which was celebrated in 1920, which determined the day that we are celebrating here in 2021, is the change of mindset. And now we have the tools to push the message across the board. That's right. African women 
arise. Yes. You may say, how's that the message, Baba? You didn't say brothers. No, because if African women arise with our respect, have they back, we do our work, they will lead, they will lead, we will rise as a people. That's right. We will rise well, as a people. We you know it the, can't the, be denied. The signs are all around us, brother. For us to be able to even have this conversation is a mere fact that many of our race first uh, men and women did their job. They did their job to carry us where we are right now. And it's our responsibility, each one of us, to do our job to raise up. And not to bear down on the masses that are not asleep, but to try to raise them up, to try to wake them up. And what better way to do that than doing it from a spirited perspective, from a powerful perspective? Because too often we get caught in this whole thing, well, I'm political or I'm economic, I'm this. You should be all of that and more, but you got to be spiritual or you got to be connected spiritually because we come from those great ancestors. If it were not for them, we would not even be here. They have right. reached the point of freedom physically because they are not in bondage being here going through what we still go through with our temples of being locked down. I want to hail up for Black August one more time. All our political prisoners and all our prisoners of war. What I mean by that is all African people. Even if you made a mistake, even if you committed a crime, as long as it wasn't a breach upon some girl, some woman, or some murder, you should definitely also get justice from the system because many of our brothers and sisters caught in that system and cycle are prisoners of war. I our, political, our political prisoners who have fought for us just like we fighting, who have been locked up because of their political positions, because of their consciousness need to be freed immediately. That's reparations. All of our products that are in museums all around the world, we want it all back. You ain't had no business taking it. You ain't got no business with it. You ain't got no business profiting off our goods. Give it back. We also want our land and Mother Africa back. All of the resources that feed off to the world, uh, all of the gems that come from Africa. We ain't poor. We are impoverished because we are oppressed. And we are oppressed by a lack of leadership. Yeah, some by our own kind who have fell into the, 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 the trap of the Urugu, still caught in mental slavery. They got to get out of the way too. We want justice and repair for ourselves. And we certainly want justice from Yorugu. Okay. Sanjay Sanan, justice from Yorugu, I don't think can come. I don't think they understand justice when it comes to us. But nonetheless. But we want it. We, we want it. I, 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 not only do we want it, we have to define it, claim and it, and take it. And take it. it. And You're take right, it. sir. You're That's absolutely right. And right. Take I'm, glad it. You made, I'm glad you made that point. Yeah, so you got to see. Clarity. Yeah, you we ain't take begging it. for nothing no, no. more. We're not knocking on no doors no more. No. We are opening up the doors See, of no return. Because if you knock on the door, then you're asking to come in. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't Hello. asking to come in. Hello, sir. Sister Tendai, I see you expressing on your face. I figure there's some words you want to say. No, nah, I was just saying, amen. Speaking truth to power, Brother Senghor, you came back fired up and I'm loving it. I yeah, should. well, well, one thing about Little Africa, the African side of L.A., I learned so much while I was there, met so many people. Our brother Renoko is working his mojo already, Tendai. He's pulled together so many people from the West Coast, East Coast, and all around the world that normally might be doing the same kind of work, but not together. The very brother who's doing a lot of the documentation and making CDs and DVDs for Renoko, we got to meet. That brother was uh, that brother did our whole convention. So we have information for all of our members that are out there that did not come. We also have some things to share with Africans around the world that were not involved, not our closed sessions. But yeah, I'm motivated and I'm hot. I'm tired. I'm, I'm on jet <laughs> lag. I'm on all that. But the black electricity keeps me rolling. My That's vehicle right. broke down on me on, uh, on Blair Road in front of traffic. My nephew came and towed me into a lot. And here I am still dealing with independence. So that is a testament. And it ain't about me. It ain't about she. It ain't about he. It's about we collectivity. Together, we will win. And that's what we are all about on August the 31st. Mama Tendai, we look forward to so many more opportunities for us to continue to speak truth to power. But this is a very critical day. And I'm so happy that Brother Heru was able to put this together while me and Zama was flying from five hours from Little Africa, West, West Coast. And uh, they talk about jet lag. I, I got I got cosmic lag. 
you know, <laughs> I got cosmic lag. You know, I ain't caught the jet lag, jet lag yet. I got cosmic lag. Right. And when, when you me, finally slow down, you'll tell. find the jet lag. <laughs> we got some stories to tell, brother. And, I know. and not only that, we got some more connected people. We grew, we grew in numbers. We, uh, we, we had a, a, a marvelous convention where brothers and sisters came from many places despite the pandemic, despite all of what's going on in LA, so they say. But I learned something from our professor David on. I had no idea that only 8% of Africans were in Los Angeles. I, did, I didn't know that. I know that now. But of that 8%, we saw, sure saw a lot of conscious ones, as well as we saw brothers and sisters from all over uh, the United States come to uh, Brother Renoko's home going, which was super powerful. So we got a lot of stories to tell and share, Mama Tendai. But uh, we still have to let our brother, who is continue to be our traveling ambassador in the Cosmos, uh, uh, go on his journey. I try to tell people we got to let him go physically. You know, we got to tap into his spirit and let him go physically, deal with his physical works, words, and deeds that he left. But let him travel. Please don't hold him. Let him go on his journey so he can meet the lots of Dr. Clark, Marcus Garvey, Tony Martin, uh, 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 Stell James, Amy Jocks Garvey, uh, Farouk Muhammad, Kamal Robinson, and so many of our own ancestors that are certainly working their mojo in the ancestral realm. Ashe. 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 One thing you're saying, Baba, that I keep hearing that keeps going in my ear is they both. okay, with all the stuff that's going on with Haiti and everything. Yes. Christoph. Ashe. Not Toussaint. That's right. Okay. Desaline. Ashe. Yeah. What do they say? You must be of one single thought, of one single mind, of one single purpose, and that was their freedom. Ashe. So nothing Ashe. else mattered. And that's how they achieved it. And at least my work in terms of studying when I, I um, some of the research I did was on the Battle of Ottawa. Yes. To, to truly kind of understand it. Um, and I came to understand some things other than, than uh, you know, the documentary that highly did. It was um, Queen Taitu, Menelik's wife, who basically, she started the war because she's the one who didn't believe that the Europeans were telling the truth. And once they looked at the document, the treaty that had been signed, there was two different treaties. One was in Amharic, said one thing, and one that was in Italian said something different. The one that was in Amharic said, you know, basically we are partners, et cetera, et cetera. The one that was in Italian basically said that Ethiopia was giving up its rights to its independence and allowing um, Italy to be its ambassador, to be its, uh, person who was going to speak for him on the world stage. I say that's true. Okay. She brought her men in and started the war. But one other thing is understanding is the the Ethiopians went to war with their priests. Yes. And while they would be in battle, before the battle, they would get permission. Okay from the spirit world so that yes. those ancestral spirits would support them in their effort. I see. And during the battle, those priests were continuing to pray and keep that, you know what I'm saying? Keeping that energy going that was calling on ancestors, that was calling on that spiritual world and that spiritual energy to give them the energy so that they could be successful. Because remember, they defeated three major European countries with sticks and stones. So they only got the bullets and the guns when they when they defeated some or killed one of the Europeans, then they picked up what he had. And that's how they because that's they, how they armed themselves. That's how they armed themselves. I say. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Even and some of the those truths exist for many of the combats that we did on behalf of the Yorubo in different wars that we didn't start off as the soldier. But we did wind up picking up the weapons and doing the work, which is why. That, but the most important part is that's tapping into the spiritual energy mm -hmm. yes. to give oh. you the capability of overcoming the limitations of your physical experience. 
Yes, that was yes. the same thing for the Maji Maji Rebellion. Yep. Okay. Uh, the Mau Mau. I say. Okay. Not just what happened in, in, in Haiti as well. It all started with them dealing with that and pulling on that energy and understanding they could connect to it and actually believing that they could connect into it so that it did not limit them by their physical condition. And, and that would be a part of the lessons that we must teach. Yes. Because we have to grasp an understanding of our own spiritual realm, our spirituality, our own forces. I, I, I don't care what language you may use, but you must connect it mentally, spiritually, so in, in you, in the essence of African people. Yeah. Because all of the spirits of righteousness are ours. Yes. And I understand that there are two sides. There is those spirits that are not righteous. But for us, ours were always the righteous, the strong, those who were committed. So I, I say that to bring back to Independence Day, the yeah. concept and the understanding that we must not only change our thinking, but we have to rebuke warmed over neo-colonialism today. See, I'm moving it from colonialism now. See, we have to rebuke warmed over neo-colonialism. Neo yeah. See, because the, the Europe, the other race, I don't give them too much credit, mm -hmm. thought enough. The that descendants as, of the Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Those descendants thought well enough to say, well, I see them pushing for independence. So I will not fight it, but I will direct it by saying this is how you can go to achieve what you want. So I'm going to direct you. And then when you went there and you began to see, well, wait a minute, this isn't what it's supposed to be. And before you, your mind grasped it, they gave you, here's another way to go. We gave you another direction along the same path at a different, what they considered elevation, but you didn't change anything. You see, you have what is considered an independent country, but it's not independent from the neo-colonial power that colonized you in the beginning. But you believe you have some political independence, but if you are not economical, it's social structure, spiritual connection, if you aren't free in those critical areas, you're not going to be free. That's right. And the only thing that teaches you that and gives you that understanding is your connection to the spirits that stood before you, battled before you, understood before you, and have the oneness of being in order for you to understand. When we connect it to the spirituals as we've for the battles that Sister Tendai spoke of, we connected to a truth. We connected to an understanding, a truth. And by being connected to that truth, the challenges that we faced became easier to accomplish because we recognized what we needed to do to change our condition because it was not truth. Recognize that. Our ancestors, again, 1920, 25,000 strong from all over the world, came to New York City and said, there is a truth. African people are not free. And it is our responsibility to set in place the stage for our independence as a people. And that independence was to be a nation, a nation which was a culmination of everyone that participated to be a nation under the spirit of our ancestral ancestors that say we can be independent. That job has not been complete. Absolutely. And Absolutely. we have to complete it. Brother Haber. By completing the process? Yes. Um, you have to think about Kwame Nkrumah's book, Information Warfare. 
Yes. Yes. And basically what happens is that when the invader comes in to take over a country, they systematically cut the spiritual cords yeah. to the ancestors through mental images. Mm -hmm. And if you spread that virus among the people, then there's a circuitry that forms the brain as well as the energy center is short circuited and it cannot access the information that's in the blood, that's, that's in this energy center and what with the spiritual cords. And there's a terminology for that, isn't it? I mean, and the explanation is 100% on Tiger, but there's a terminology for that. It's like, and, and I'm, well, gonna, well, I'm pressing you, I'm pressing you to give it to me. Well, it's, it's, uh, in communications, it's called, it's, in communications, it's called like intercivil inter interference. Yeah. Is where you think of a person that's centered, they get information um, from, from a channel, but if they have another channel coming in and the channel, the signal is stronger, that the other transmission signal takes precedence over that. So as they receive more of the information come in, they can't, they, it becomes predominant throughout the nervous system and throughout the spiritual cords in the body. So, so that's why it's, it's, it's like it's like not like amnesia. What's that? What is it called? It's it's it's, it's um. It's, I'm, it's, I'm thinking of a of a medical terminology that addresses it. It's um, like dementia. It's dementia, but but but, but what it is is that on the, steroids. No, it, it short circuits your communications because they, they, they shift the frequency. <sighs> Of, of your connection to the culture no, no, as well and, as no, I, I understand. I, right. I thoroughly do that. What I what I'm looking see because I think our people our need to have a term that they can relate it to, and that's why oh. I mentioned dementia. There's another one. What's what's the one that starts with an A? Amnesia. Not not amnesia. It's another one. Alzheimer's. I don't. Know. Alzheimer's. Oh, okay, see, because well, I... Alzheimer's is a disconnect. Yes. Yes. Right, that's true. The circuitry that's, isn't working. Right. From, and that's what brain. that's mm -hmm. what you just described. The circuitry in so, your blood, in your brain, not connecting, not working. I got so, you, Singor. I just wanted to do to try to bring that out because folks would hear our technician, and the reason yeah. they wouldn't understand it is because it didn't hit on a term that they could understand, they could relate to. See, so well, I wanted to make sure that I connected that dot because as we continue to move forward on independence, those are part of the challenges. Yes, sir. I, 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 no, I totally agree with you. You know, the term I'm going to use is broken blacktricity because, <laughs> because, because if your blacktricity is broke, then you are, uh, you are malfunctioning and you malfunction mentally, you malfunction spiritually, malfunction emotionally, you, mal you even malfunction physically. That's why we have all of these illnesses and challenges and sicknesses. But if you connect your blacktricity, all of those ancestors we talked about and the most high will give us all the juice we need through their blacktricity, as Tentai is saying, to reconnect to the spirit. And like Brother Heru is saying, God be taught us to be science par excellence, yes. not science par deficit, science par excellence. And they are those that have reversed everything and call themselves scientific when actually they are destructive and they are running a, a, a pitchfork through our blacktricity, cutting off our life source so that we don't know how to really live. Now, I, I can't make it no more plainer than that. Malcolm X told us straight up, you know, and, and, and Marcus Garvey told us straight up, and you just told us, PG, straight up. Tendai just told us straight up. However we define it, it breaks down simply to we are disconnected to our rudical line. And when we reconnect to our rudical line, the black tricity that we need will give us the insight mentally, spiritually, and physically and emotionally to create all the positive healing we need to do, including the planet. I want to yeah. say that again, including the planet, because if yes. we don't come up with a way to heal the planet, anything living on the planet is going to be sick and possibly even destroyed. Garvey said, Look for him in the whirlwind and look for him to be a terror against the foes of Negro and African liberty. What did he mean? He meant when I'm gone, I am no longer in bondage physically and I got the blacktricity and I'm going to be the real Marcus Garvey and I'm going to bring countless millions. <laughs> 
<coughs> excuse me, of ancestors back with me to free all of our African people. Now, you can make a choice. You can take a choice. Either you go with us or you don't. That's right. And what we're asking everybody to do is to connect because the more black electricity we connect, the more power and the quicker we can be a sol solving and solving all our problems. So because brother, then we be right? going to sovereignty. That's right. And, ah, sovereign and sovereign. You, hey, brother, that is it, Baba right. Gilly. Sovereignty, the root of that is solving our problems. Yes. And, 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 and what Brother Heru just laid out is a scientific breakdown of how African science par excellence understands how they got us hoodwinked, how they got us tricked, because we love life. We love all kinds of life of the earth. And they tricked us by that. And they reversed us, changed the images, and created some kind of Frankenstein uh, 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 things. And, and it also cut our black electricity off. And now we out here getting our own selves in the street. We don't even understand that when you shoot somebody, you're shooting your darn self. You're no, shooting we your don't. Own self. We, we, so we, we don't get, have that knowledge. We got to get back to that. And we also got to come up with ways and means to secure our future. We would not even be here right now if our ancestors didn't secure something for us. So now That's we right. got to secure for generations to come, as you said, 100 years and on down the road, because we ain't been down on the bottom as long as we've been on the planet. And people need to understand, not just have hope. You got to have vision. You got to be a visionary. If you want to come out of this, think you're going to come out of this. Change, break that link, hook back up, break that, that, that link that holds us away from one another. And that holds us trapped. That electricity line. Right. That, that holds us trapped cord. in this false reality. That spiral yeah. cord that comes to the universe, they call it DNA. We know darn well that our ancient ancestors are still working their mojo for us. Yeah, Absolutely. and one of the things to realize that the DNA is a, is a sine wave, and almost all of the communication uses sacred geometry and sine waves to transmit information. So what happened is that we had to access our African um, Wi-Fi systems versus the Nathaniel Wi-Fi systems, and information is being modulated across those systems. Yes, because when we function on those systems, we're still not functioning on our own truth and our own reality. We're functioning on the warmed over stuff, which is their truth and their reality. You see, when you say reconnect, you have to have an understanding that you are disconnected first. That's right. Because you can't connect if I think I'm connected. If I think I understand it the way it is, then I don't think you telling me anything I don't already know. Now, what I am denying within myself is the root of me, the essence of me, which is where the breakdown in the scientific factors of blacktricity comes. Understanding the who and what we are. Why I continuously and you have continuously pointed to 1920 because it was not the beginning point, but it was a strong point in time to make the issue. Because you see, we've really never lost all of our way because right. many of us have always challenged and fought for change and Resistance. taught and educated youth. Resistance. What we have is a time gap, or maybe not a time gap, but we have a breakdown in blacktricity and a various number of us that causes the struggle between us and ourselves and therefore between us, ourselves, and the other guy. Of the other right. entity. You see, because that's where that black electricity breakdown, what it does is it separates us. And so when we start talking about the positive, productive activity of us as a people from history, those of us who are connected to the false electrical grid, if I may use that terminology, and have not come out of that begin to be our own enemy. We begin to fight each other. We begin to challenge each other. We begin to work against each other. You made a point about recognizing that if I shoot someone that looks like me, I have to recognize that I'm shooting me. Because reality is the reason I'm shooting you that look like me is because I'm trying to shoot me. That's right. Because I hate myself. Because I hate That's myself. Right. And the right. problem with hating yourself is that you're also taught 
within the scope of us that that ain't the right thing to do. Suicide don't work for us. See, so there is still some linkage to our historical black electricity. It is just that our oppressor has acknowledged and rooted us in his electrical grid, in his scientific mental thrust to say, okay, you really got a problem. I literally get disgusted when they decide to talk about why there is black on black crime. It's an easy answer. It's an easy answer. I'm black. I don't like black. So when I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror, I'm angry. I'm angry at black. Instead of I'm in love with black, I'm angry at black. And what do I go shoot? I go shoot what I'm angry at because I should be angry at that which oppresses me. But I haven't learned that I can be angry at that because that's what feeds me. At least that's what I believe. No, really, that is what sucks the blood and life out of you in order for it to continue. And so we continuously to feed our own self-hate and our own self-destruction. African Independence Day is a day by which this type of conversation, not only being recorded and broadcast, has to continue because that's what our ancestors were able to do in the 20s. They were able to force feed the conversation across many spectrums. I said it and I'll say it again, we have better tools. We have to force feed this conversation across many spectrums. My sister Tendaya as a teacher takes these lessons across spectrums, but to elevate her givings, we need to have her making those same lectures globally. Yes. So that the youth who cannot touch her hand can feel her mind and spirit and move it forward and begin the reconnection process. Because I'm going to tell you, that same entity that we need to disconnect from is planning the connection grid for the next generation of our children already. Right. Not just in universities, but all the way to elementary schools. They are already planning to continue our disconnect. Tendai, I see you. Say in the womb. In the womb, Baba, because, you know, it begins there with our connectedness, you know, to, our to the unborn. Yeah. Um, and, and, if, and when the mother's not well, physically, spiritually, you know, mentally, neither is the child. That's and right. the child, yeah. we, know, That's right. we know now that the baby unborn child hears before it's born yes so it's in the stomach in hearing and feeling just what the brother was talking about here because connectedness through the water in the embryonic fluid is carrying that energy like the haru was saying that electricity there to that child feeding that child so that it can grow into the, the human being that we need it to be and to be birthed so it actually begins really at conception. Yes. 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 And one thing to think about the conception process is that when a child is born, that child is actually um, integrating the multiple family lines between the maternal and paternal family lines. So what happens if the if child is in a stressful environment, then three generations, seven generations, future generations, the programming of the ovary and, and the eggs the, 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 the actual physical archives of the ancestral line, as well as the programming of the, of the, of the, of the, of the testicles when it produces the sperm programming, is that they actually are programming, deprogramming our cultural connection across the past generations in the future. Yes, and because that energy, that energy, that disconnect energy becomes what exerts itself through the womb through the water, through the vibrations, through the sound, and therefore the self-hate aspect of us comes from there. PG. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just want to say I'm, I'm I'm about to leave, but I I I I I, I want to say. Uh, are you are you about to move in that vehicle so that you're going to be moving to safety? No, I'm driving in another vehicle now. I have another vehicle. Like I said, they can't stop the electricity, man. My queen, once again, sisters rule. So my queen made sure that she jumped in her daughter's vehicle and left her vehicle for me. So I'm not grounded. So okay. even when the cars run out, 
we find a way. And even if I didn't, I got my foot, my feet, so I could I can walk where I gotta go. But the point I'm making to you is that no matter how critical th things get, we find a way. I, I you know I, I didn't even know I was gonna be able to be on this Zoom tonight, but it was meant to because our black electricity is so deep. And you shot me a you shot me a text and saying, "Are you gonna come up?" Right after that, the tow truck was just putting down my car, and I was in my Queen's car. My nephew came to my rescue and took me off the street where I was blocking traffic, everybody blowing and oh, going crazy. I was able to keep my cool and tell them to be cool until we got the thing out the street, Black Tricity. You see, that's what we need. And Mama Tendai, you're absolutely right. We need to de-stress our African women so when they carry our African life that they're eating right, they're healthy, and they are providing all of the nutrients that that child needs. Hey, Rue, you're right. We got to reverse this whole thing, you know, and take it back. When we know mo most most pregnant women that have that have uh, you know, what they call a midwives and, ah. and don't go to the hospital, you know, they turn out to be some of the most healthy and lovely children. Why? Because they and they don't necessarily get slapped around. They come out crying. You know what I'm saying? So we need to understand that there's a natural way out of this foolishness and to understand when they drug us, just like they drug the wrecking industry, not the wrecking industry, but the wrecking industry, they change when we are so great with our black electricity and creative expression and our art and we drum and we dance, that raises our black electricity. I mean, when we party, you know, no matter how hard it is to pay our bills, no matter how hard it is to live, we come to a party, we get uplifted. That is the same black electricity we're talking about to put into the movement, you know? And like you said, Baba Kili, it is critical for our young brothers and sisters to know it's a trap. You're headed for self-destruction if you don't look to construct your black electricity, raise yourself up and to get away from the miseducated way that the miseducated system is trying to educate you for prison. You got to get away from that, brothers and sisters. So let's stop making excuses and let's get busy building all of the structures we need so we can raise up from this Babylonian wickedness once and for all. I leave you on these words. One God. One God. One aim. One, aim. one, destiny. one destiny. One destiny. I say. And I say. I say. I say. Uh, anyone I, care yeah. to? That, that's you, Baba Mosey? No, I, I said it. It, it, it's it's that time anyway so <laughs> okay okay sante signing for that but yeah. before we go uh the folks that are here uh sister tendai comment no i'm just saying i'm you know i'm i'm feeling the energy i'm feeling the, as as baba would say the black tristity uh and and i'm energized which is what we have to do for each other so that we can mm -hmm. continue absolutely um, you know, I'm I'm grateful for the technology. So yes, that I can be with you e even though I'm not physically with you. Right, a better tool. And understanding the technology is Ogun. Yes, right. The better tool. <laughs> That's right. It's a better tool. It's it's what we have to do with the tools. Exactly. And when we use the tools properly, then the energy and the connections that we need to make. We will make, strengthen, and we will raise this race from one that is under servitude to one that knows freedom. African Independence Day. My last words, help you mighty race. You can accomplish what you will. What you will. I say, Sister Paula. Okay. I say, I say to everything. The energy was excellent tonight. So I just have to thank all my brothers and sisters. And um, we just have to keep on moving on. I say, All I right. did, Mary Bolter. I know you're still there. Do you want to try to unmute to give some words before we go? Okay. I don't think she can unmute. I, I, there, I got you, Sister Margo. Come on, Queen Mother. Comments. <laughs> um, I gained so much knowledge from these programs, and um, I appreciate it. I do feel the energy as well, the black electricity. And I thank everyone for sharing. <coughs> I say. Uh, Brother Heyru. Science for excellence accomplish what you what you will. <laughs> I say. Brother Zama. I say. <laughs>
Okay, not going to unmute. So then as we close, let's say this conversation will be the foundational conversation that would take our Independence Day and keep it in conversation all the way through the next 100 years. And every August 31st, we're going to come together and begin to make sure that there's a message that we're sending out to our race, to our people. And our message is the message of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. And that message is we can accomplish building our own once we understand who we are. I'm not looking to go into the whirlwind to be the real Achille and Krumah, even though I understand the limitations I have in this physical format. But if I am real now, that energy once released, as Garvey said, becomes a terror. We are working to build the next 100 years of African independence. See, African independence. We want an African independent nation for African people all over the world. I recognize that the oppressor has given us a language barrier. I recognize that our own cultural misunderstanding gives us a cultural barrier. But what I truly recognize is that our connection to our ancestors eliminates all barriers. It allows us to come together, sit down, interface, interact, grow, and build together to remove the oppressive neo-colonialistic system generated by those who wish to be us, but cannot. So it is our job to take the leadership. So every year from August 31st, starting September 1, every time you get an opportunity to speak, you promote African Independence Day so that it resonates through the minds of African people like all those other days. I may not can give you a day off, but what I can give you is a day of truth, <laughs> African independence. And I say this to come together to say one God. One God. One, God. one, God. one aim. One aim. One aim. One aim. And one destiny. One destiny. One destiny. Amandala. Amandala. Thank you, Baba Mosey. Thank you, Brother Hayrood. Thank you, 330, for making sure that this happened. No.